Good afternoon, Coach Slack here once again, continuing our readings on the Synaxarian of the Latin Triodian and Pentecostalian. Lazarus Saturday. On this day, the Saturday before Palm Sunday, we celebrate the fourth day raising from the dead of Lazarus, the righteous friend of Christ. Lazarus was a Hebrew of the sect of the Pharisees, and as far as known, he was the son of Simon the Pharisee, who dwelt in the village of Bethany. He became a friend of our Lord Jesus Christ when he sojourned on earth for the salvation of our race. When Christ continually conversed with Simon, entering his house and discoursing on the resurrection from the dead, Lazarus was quite pleased with the genuineness of this teaching, and not only he, but also his two sisters, Martha and Mary. As the time of the Savior's passion drew near, when it was especially necessary to believe in the mystery of the resurrection, Jesus was sojourning on the other side of the Jordan. Here he raised from the dead the daughter of Jairus and the son of a widow. At this time his friend, Lazarus, contracted a grievous illness and died. Then Jesus, even though he was not present there, said to his disciples, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him up. And again, a little later, Lazarus is dead. Then Jesus left the Jordan and went to Bethany, which was about 15 stadia, approximately two miles away from Jerusalem. Martha, the sister of Lazarus, went to meet him and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus asked the crowd, Where have you laid him? Immediately everyone went to the tomb. As the stone was removed, Martha said, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. He shed tears for the one lying there, and he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. At once he who was dead came forth, was unbound, and set out for home amidst great rejoicing and thanksgiving. This strange wonder roused the Hebrew people to malice, and they were infuriated with Christ. But Jesus once more fled and escaped. The high priest determined to kill Lazarus, because many who saw him were won over to Christ. Since Lazarus knew what they were thinking, he sailed away to Cyprus. He dwelt there and was later elevated by the holy apostles to the archbishop of Citium, present-day Larnica. He was beloved by God, conducting himself most nobly as an archpastor, performing many miracles. Thirty years after his resurrection in 63 AD, he died once more and was buried in Citium. It is said that after his return to life, Lazarus ate only meals having some sweetness. Also, it is related that the All-Holy Mother of God sewed his omophordian and cuffs with her own hands and presented them to him as a gift. Furthermore, it is told that Lazarus never laughed but once after being raised from the dead, and that was when he observed someone stealing a clay vessel. At that point he smiled and said, Clay stealing clay. Lazarus said nothing concerning those in Hades, either because he was not permitted to behold anything, or he was directed to be silent about what he had seen. The most wise Emperor Leo in 890 A.D., after a divine vision, transported the precious and holy relics of this saint to Constantinople, to the church of St. Lazarus that he had constructed, and deposit them, deposited them reverently and ceremoniously to the right of the church's entrance against the front walls of the holy bema. Here his precious relics still remain, exuding an ineffable fragrance. The translation of his holy relics is commemorated on October the 17th. The resurrection of Lazarus is appointed to be celebrated on this present day, after the 40-day purifying fast, because our holy and God-bearing fathers, especially the holy apostles, found this miracle to be the beginning and cause of the fury of the Jews against Christ, when he was about to give himself over to his holy sufferings. For this reason, they place his this extraordinary and wonderful event here. In addition, the placement of this feast by the Holy Fathers serves as a necessary rest and transition between the rigors of the fast and the awesome and saving events of Holy Week. For in truth, yesterday's evening's Vespers not only ended the Holy Forty Days, but also ushered us into a joyous resurrection prelude that will eventually lead to our Savior's Passion. St. John the Theologian alone records the raising of Lazarus, since the other evangelists omitted it, perhaps because Lazarus was still living and was able to be seen. It is said that the rest of the Gospel of John was written about the eternal begottenness of Christ, the other evangelists including nothing about this.
It is desired to believe that Christ is both the Son of God and God, that he is risen, and that there will be a resurrection of the dead. And because of the raising of Lazarus, this is especially to be believed since his resurrection is a confirmation of the universal resurrection of man. Therefore, from this event, every man who has already died is said to be a Lazarus, and the burial garment is called a Lazaroma. For the word alludes to the remembrance of the first Lazarus. For if Lazarus was raised by the word of Christ and came back to life again, so all men, even if they have died, will rise at the last trumpet and live eternally. Through the intercessions of your beloved friend, St. Lazarus, O Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Homily. The risen Christ is the hope of all Christians by St. Ralio, Bishop of Saragossa in 651 A.D. Lazarus, our friend, is sleeping. In saying this, Christ, who is the hope of all believers, refers to the departed as those who are asleep. By no means does he regard them as dead. Paul the Apostle does not want us to grieve about those who have fallen asleep. Our faith tells us that all who believe in Christ will never die. Indeed, faith assures us that Christ is not dead, nor shall we die. The Lord himself will come down from heaven, and there will be the command of the archangel's voice in the sound of the trumpet. And then those who were united with Christ in death will rise. Let the hope of resurrection encourage us then, because we shall see again those whom we lose here below. Of course, we must continue to believe firmly in Christ. We must continue to obey His commandments. His power is so great that it is easier for Him to raise the dead to life than it is for us to arouse those who are sleeping. As we are saying all these things, some unknown feeling causes us to burst into tears. Some hidden feeling discourages the mind which tries to trust and to hope. Such is the sad human condition. Without Christ, all of our life is utter emptiness. O oh, death, you separate those who are joined to each other in marriage. You harshly and cruelly divide those whom friendship unites. But your power is broken. Your heinous yoke has been destroyed by the one who sternly threatened you when Hosea cried out, O death, I shall be your death. And with the words of the apostle, we too deride you. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Your conqueror redeemed us. He handed himself over to wicked men so that he could transform the wicked into persons who were truly dear to him. It would take too long to narrate all the consolations intended for our benefit in the scriptures, but by focusing our attention upon the glory of our Redeemer, there is sufficient hope for our resurrection. Through faith, we know that we are already risen from the dead. The apostle writes, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we are at the same time living with him. We do not really belong to ourselves. We belong to the one who redeemed us. Our will should always depend on His. For this reason we say in the Lord's Prayer, Your will be done. Confronted with death, the sentiments of Job should be our own. The Lord gave and the Lord take away. May His name be blessed. Let us repeat here and now what Job said, lest we turn out to be unlike Him when our time comes. Through the prayers of the Holy Hierarch, Ralio, O Christ our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. <laughs>